Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I'm back in the saddle here in the office of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ in my study. You can, as you can tell, I got my good old Jesus pride flag behind me. And by the way, you know, we're gearing up for the month of June because this nation has lost its mind and they're going to give the month of June, declare it LBGTQ Pride Month, and I'm praying that every preacher out there will praise God, let the Holy Ghost speak to his heart and uh, and to his heart and her heart and declare that we're not going to give this ground, that we're going to celebrate Jesus, that we're going to draw lines of demarcation, that we are going to purposely in our sermons from our pulpits declare that a lifestyle that the God of the Bible declares is an abomination nation should not be a lifestyle that gets an entire month of praise, celebration, and observation. So I'm praying, preachers, that you will push back. But before I get too far into that, I want to take the time to thank you for the multiple texts, cards, letters, gifts, well wishes, prayers, uh, and your presence that you gave to this preacher and to my family, uh, to my brothers and me uh, during uh, the passing of our beloved mother, Mother Gwendolyn Ingram Ellison. God took her home to be with him. And as you know, uh, just this past Saturday, we had the, the eulogy here. And the Lord enabled me with your prayers and your support to carry out that assignment that my mama gave me when she was living. She said to me, son, can you handle it? And I said with tears in my eyes, mom, I guess I'll have to since you've given, this, given me this assignment. Now she's somewhere around the throne. She's with Jesus Christ and she's left us here to carry on. I thank you for the love that you showed my wife. I thank you for the love of the members of the upper room, of the members of North Carolina third, of the members of the church of God in Christ, and of all of you, my friends out there from near and far. I heard from you. I felt your prayers and you, my friends, prayed me through, through that part of it. Now I know that I'm not through it. I think about her all the time. I grieve, I cry, and when it comes on me, I go with it. And, uh, and, and yet we are carrying on in the name of the Lord and allowing the scriptures to be our comfort. This preacher will never be in the crowd of those who downplay the scriptures just because death or some personal tragedy has come our way. None of us, my friends, are immune, and all of us have to leave here someday. But God is good, and I still say, in the words of Job, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, uh, thank you so much for that, and uh, uh, she will never be forgotten, but I do understand this. The perspective up there where my mother is, is much different than the perspective that we have down here. Down here, we remember them in memoriam, and we thank God for them, and we grieve for them, and we miss them. But up there, they are saying, Lord Jesus, when are you going to bring them up here to see what we see and to experience what we're experiencing? Because they've never seen anything like this, but we know what it's like down there. So one day we're all, if we serve the Lord, are going to be there and what a glorious day that will be. Now, my friends, I literally just left the airport. I've just flown in from South Haven, Mississippi. We flew into Memphis, Tennessee. I went to South Haven, Mississippi to be with Bishop uh, 
Uh, Vincent Matthews, what a mighty man of God he is. And there at Tabernacle Church, a part of their Pentecostal uh, conference. And it was a service indeed. And as a matter of fact, much of what we talked about last night there, we're going to revisit uh, some of that in our teachings here tonight because we are headed, leading uh, this, uh, we're on our way to Pentecostal Sunday. And uh, I'm excited about what God is doing. Now, my friends, I love the Lord and I know you do. And I thank God for being a Christian and thank God for being born again in a day like today. And I want to say to every one of you, you need to allow God to, uh, if you don't have him, allow the Lord to fill you with the, with his Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit operating in your life. The Holy Spirit, among other things, is given to us so so that we will know how to navigate, combat, outwit, cast out, and destroy, uh, to cope in this world, that evil system that exists, that ignores God, that's uh, antithetical and contrary to the laws of God. There are multiple ideologies, doctrines, teachings, thoughts, uh, entertainment, entertainments, different things that's designed to Pull you away from the God of the Bible. Well, I tell you, the God, the Holy Ghost operating on the inside of you will give you the power you need to cope with all of these things. I said to my friend, uh, Elder Tim Williams, he picked me up at the airport. I said to Tim, there's no way I could have served the Lord and walked with Christ and been saved uh, for these 46 years that I've walked with Jesus. And I said, sir, every time I listen to myself, I've made a shipwreck. What has kept me has has been the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, the comforter. Praise God. That same spirit that showed up on the day of Pentecost and uh, filled the house and filled them with cloven tongues of fire. Sounded like a uh, Russian mighty wind. That Holy Spirit has been my lead, my leader, my guide, my keeper, my teacher down through the years. Jesus uh, said to his disciples, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then he said this, I'll tell you what I'm going to do to show my love for you. I'm going to pray the father and he will send you another comforter and he will abide with you forever. He's going to send you someone just like me, but unlike me, he won't leave you, not even for a little while. He'll abide with you forever. And among the things that he will do, he will enlighten your understanding. He will help you understand the relationship between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and the operation of God and the kingdom of God in this earth. He will show you your role in the things of God. He will, sh he will give you the Spirit's peace, the Spirit's love, the Spirit's power, the Spirit's gentleness. The fruit of the Spirit will be alive in you. Yes, praise the Lord. I contend that Spirit-filled, born-again believers, I, I won't say that we don't ever get down. I don't say, Brother Gary, that we don't uh, taste a little depression and stuff like that from time to time. But I do say this. We don't stay there long because the Holy Spirit knows how to lift you and bring you out and restore your soul. Yes, he's a lifter. He's a keeper. And I'm going to talk about him tonight. I want to talk about having the courage of your conviction here tonight. I want to talk about being a believer who is not afraid to state and say what we believe tonight. Oh, my guns are loaded and I can barely wait for you to meet me here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight for, here it is. I missed three weeks. Give you the drum roll. Bible study. <laughs> yes, we are going to study the scriptures together and the Lord is going to bless us real good. Now my time is up. I'm going to cut it short tonight because I got to get home and get ready. And I want you to meet me. God's going to speak to us. And I want to say to you, 
the words that Jesus said to his disciples, he breathed on them and said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll see you tonight.